How are you guys doing? So I got the CNC machine back together and it is running now. And uh, yeah, we got the front here all bolted down. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, we got some we got some problem areas. So I'm gonna have to deal with those. Thinking what I'm gonna do is like, for instance, this one here. I think it's uh, it's about five millimeters sticking outwards. I'm thinking about going along on the TIG torch and uh, putting a line down there and seeing if that will uh, suck it in and get rid of those warps. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, this one over here, I tried hitting it with the propane torch because it was already protruding out and giving it a couple hits with a hammer and I think it did help, but could be a little bit better. Overall, yeah, I'm not really happy with how this works, but how this looks, but like it is functional. Comparing to the welds down here, this one, like the the uh, chip pan came out like absolutely perfect. There's no warps in anything, and it's it's all like really big. The difference was I used uh, chill blocks behind all this, and I welded that in the summer, so it was already nice and warm. And uh, yeah, but well, uh, yeah, in this case, this one here. I didn't use any backing, so I had lots of problems with uh, it shrinking on me, and then also because, and also because it's stainless steel and the heat builds up really quick, it's really easy to blow through this stuff. And yeah, and in some areas like here, I uh, I didn't have at least one or two of these uh, plates. I didn't have them cut uh, perfectly straight, so there was some gaps. And uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe if I revisit and redo this thing, what I'll do is I'll find a place that can use a press to uh, to bend the stainless steel to these angles. And then all I'd have to do is uh, weld a 45 degree. And yeah, it might be, I might look at that in the future. It'd be nice to also have like a an outer lip that kind of goes up on the end. Uh, that way any, any uh, coolant and stuff that makes its way out of the enclosure won't find a way to spill over. Other than that, I got the uh, computer stand up here for the monitor, and I did go ahead and weld in a little gusset in there, make it a little more rigid, so it doesn't really flex around as much. Uh, because the, let me see if I can do this while the machine is, I think it's already, yeah, there we go. So because I have the missing side panel right there, not on there, it shakes everything. I don't know if you can see that, but you can probably hear it. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, we got, uh, so you've probably seen the videos of me uh, doing the laser level stuff. Uh, what I might try is I have a small linear rail and instead of using this uh, bronze bushing setup, because this has a bunch of stiction in it. What I might do is I might revisit this and uh, attach the PCB directly onto the rail and then mount this linear rail backwards so so the uh, the carriage the carriage is attached to the uh, the gray steel there and then the uh, the linear rail is like kind of like the the thing that touches the bottom. Well, I'd probably put something on the bottom, but you get the idea. And then that way there's like, there's very little stiction, like this one's really smooth. So, might revisit that. And uh, there's my old uh, uh, clamp to keep the enclosure shut. Uh, it had a, relied on a hole, which yeah, shows up in video right there. And I didn't want to put a hole in this thing because I wanted to keep it all sealed, but I'm kind of leaning towards going back to this because this worked really well. And the nice thing was when it's when it's all closed, and even when it's open, nothing protruded out, so you never get hung up when you're walking by something, when you're walking by this thing, which was really nice. So yeah, I might I might put a hole the hole back in and. Uh, yeah, like I, I'm kind of thinking that this is kind of like a temporary thing right now with the stainless steel. And I might revisit that anyway. So I may as well just go with what was working before to keep the enclosure shut. Yeah, I can do this one hand. 
Yeah. So yeah, I have the missing. I'm missing the bottom panel there. And obviously, yeah, I gotta gotta deal with this so I can close it better. But yeah, that might be the thing to do for uh, in the meantime, keeping this thing closed. I realized that uh, when I was pulling out this chunk of aluminum, the quarters that I used to scan is still on there. And when I looked at it in a certain light, I could see all the little tiny uh, little marks on it, little divots. Because I, I probed the a rectangle 10,000 times. And it's probably not going to show up in video, but I'll put a photo there. But yeah, it's got a, tons and tons of little tiny holes in it. I do really like how this monitor is set up. It's a uh, real Frankenstein how it's done. Like the uh, the top part is from one monitor thing, and then the bottom part here is from another one. And I got them welded there, and then it's all it's all welded down there just to make this thing work. But the end result, this thing, I can move it up and down, and I can even push it into the enclosure. Let's say I want to do something, oh, press the off button. Turn that back on. I don't know if I can bend it down with one hand. But I can be in here and I can, you know, with the keyboard, because I like to use the keyboard for jogging the machine around. I can work all nice and close up here and look over there and not have to lean over this way. And works really well. But overall, yeah, I'm happy to really get this machine operational again and looking forward to uh, making some new interesting videos. I will see you guys next time.